Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate for an angle using the sum and difference formula. Now, the reason why we use the sum and difference formula is because we've learned how to evaluate for given angles. Um, but those angles have been kind of limited, you know, 30, 60, 90, pi over 6, pi over 4, um, pi over 3, and all around the unit circle. But the values that we more often not chose were values or angles that when they cross the unit circle, they cross at a point that we were familiar with. Um, or that we knew on the unit circle. So therefore, we could determine what the sine was by looking at the y coordinate. We could look at what the cosine was of that angle by looking at the x coordinate. And we could look at what the tangent of that angle was by taking the y coordinate over the x coordinate. But what happens when we're given an angle like sine of 9 degrees? Well, when we cross the intersection, we don't have a point on the unit circle that tells us what exactly the x and the y coordinate are. So one thing you could always look into is you know, using your calculator, obviously. Um, but the thing with the calculator is it's going to approximate the value, unless it's actually a given point that we have. So by using the sum and difference formulas, we can find the exact value when we just use like square roots, um, which, we'll, which I'll show you. So we're going to use existing angles that we know of. It's not going to work for 9 degrees. But we can use angles. It works for certain angles. Um, we can use the existing angles we know from the points using the sum and difference formulas. All right, so in this example here, a lot of times what you're going to have is you're going to have an angle broken down, like in 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. But exactly what I'm talking about is if I said, well, what's the sine of 105? Well, we don't know the sine of 105 basic looking at the unit circle. That doesn't have an angle that we're familiar with. So what we need to do is either break that apart into adding or subtracting, which I'll talk about a little bit more. But more often than not, you're going to have some problems, which you can see I did three out of four, where your problem is already broken up. So the first thing we want to do is now basically 45 minus 30 is really the same thing as me saying, what is the sine of 15 degrees? Well, I don't know the sine of 15 degrees. And if I plug in my calculator, I'm going to get an approximation. And I'm not looking for an approximation. I'm looking for an exact value. However, I can rewrite 15 degrees as 45 degrees minus 30. And I'm familiar with the sine of 15, 45 degrees as well as the sine of 30 degrees. But that's not what you're doing. You're just not, you're just not like distributing the sine and saying sine of 45 minus the sine of 30. That's not going to give you the same answer. So to find the exact value, we have our formulas. And I don't remember these off the top of my head, so I did write them for me. If you don't have them, make sure you get your book or your notes to you know, look at them um, and get used to them. Because as you keep on doing more and more of this work, the easier they will come for you to remember them. But for each one, I'm going to uh, write them down. So the difference formula for sine is going to be the sine of two angles, when you're subtracting two angles, is going to equal sine of x times cosine of y minus cosine of x times sine of y. Okay, So basically, all we need to do is identify, well, what is our x and what is our y? Well, when you look up here, you're basically taking one angle subtracted from the x, just like one angle here and subtracted from the next angle. So x and y represent our angles. So all I'm simply going to do is label 45 degrees as my x and y as my 30 degrees. Now, all I'm simply going to do is go in my formula and replace all my x's with 45 degrees. Let's use blue on this one. So therefore, I'm going to move this over a little bit. So therefore, I have the sine of 45 degrees. I've now plugged in, instead of x, I've plugged in 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, I get this all the time. Why is it not negative 30 degrees? Well, remember, the formula says x minus y, x minus y. You're plugging in x and you're plugging in y. You're not plugging in negative y. Okay? So it's x and y. You plug in the x and the y, but they're subtracting. So minus cosine of x, which would be cosine of 45 degrees, times the sine of y, which is 30 degrees. Okay. So now comes into the simplifying form. So now we just need to evaluate for the sine of 45 degrees, the cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, and the sine of 30 degrees. And that kind of goes back to knowing your unit circle. Now, this should be a little bit of review as far as knowing the unit circle. So I'm just going to kind of spit these off on the top of my head. But if you're still not familiar with the unit circle, make sure that you understand how to quickly be able to evaluate these by using the unit circle. So the square root of, uh, or the sine of 45 degrees is going to be the y coordinate here. Uh, of that point, which would be the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is 30 degrees is going to be the x coordinate, which in this case is going to be 1 half minus, I'm sure I have this. No, cosine of 
30 degrees. Why am I messing this up? Cosine of 45 degrees minus. I plugged in the right answer, or right one, right? Cosine of 45, or they're doing the sine. Sine of 45 minus the sine of 30. Minus sine cosine of y. Cosine is the x-coordinate. God, I keep on doing that. I don't know. Maybe that, ah, God, I, I made this problem in the last bit. I had to delete it. I don't know what's wrong with me. That's why you should have the unit circle. That's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of 35 degrees is going to be 1 half. Now, we basically just multiply them. Square root of 2 times square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 2 times 1 is going to be the square root of 2 over 4. Now, whenever you're subtracting two fractions with the same denominator, you can combine them. I cannot subtract the square root of 6 from square root of 2, though. So I have to leave that as the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. However, you might also see on a test, or your teacher might expect you to simplify it further, because the square root of 6 and square root of 2 share in common a square root of 2. So you can actually factor out that common term, and it would look something like this. Square root of 2 times the square root of 3 minus 1 divided by 4. And that would be your final answer. All right, so now let's go and get into one like this. And you know, this might be one that you might see, sine of 105 degrees. And if you plug it in your calculator, you're going to get the exact, you're going to get an approximate answer. We want an exact answer. This is an exact answer because we're leaving the square roots as they are. We're not approximating for the square roots. So um, the main important thing is to use the formulas, you've got to know x and y. You've got to know two angles. You're either adding two angles or subtracting two angles. So then what you've got to think about is, all right, 105 degrees. What two angles can I add to give me 105 degrees? Well, fortunately, we can rewrite this as the sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. So by rewriting the sine of that, now I'm able to identify my x angle and my y angle. So now I go back and use my formula. So to use the formula, though, we need to know what is the, uh, now we're adding, so what is the sum formula for sine? So the sum formula for sine is going to look like this. The sine of the sum of two angles is equal to the sine of x times the cosine of y. And it's opposite, right, I believe? Yes. No. It's the same. It's the same. Cosine's opposite. Plus. <sighs> cosine of x times cosine of y. OK, so now we know what our x is and we know what our y is. Now let's just go and plug those, value, those points in. So what we basically have here, I'm going to move the shift this. Actually, I can keep it right there. That's fine. So therefore, I have now sine of x, which is 60 degrees, um, times the cosine of y, which is 45 degrees, plus the cosine of x, which is 60 degrees, and times the cosine of y, which is not y, but y is 45 degrees. All right, so I'm going to try to take this a little bit slower so I can remember my unit circle as I try to often talk too fast. So the sine of 60 degrees is going to be the y coordinate, which is 1 half, which is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Plus, and again, I'm just going off the unit circle here, the cosine of 60 degrees is going to be the x coordinate, which is 1 half, and the cosine of 45 degrees, which is the square root of 2 over 2. Then again, we multiply these across, so I get the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Combine them, you get the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. And if you factor out your common term of square root of 2, you're left with the square root of 3 plus 1 over 4. Sweet. OK, so now let's go ahead and look into cosine. Now let's, go, now let's do cosine. So I did sum and difference for sine. Now let's get into the sum and difference for cosine. Because basically, the process is going to be basically the same. It's just the formulas are different. The main important thing is here, I left that one up. So we, if you have a single angle, you have to separate it, either as addition or subtraction, of two angles you're familiar with on the, that um, cross on the unit circle at given points. For the next two examples, I already have them separated. So guess what? The first thing you're going to do, just label x and y, x and y. Now we've got to know what the cosine formula is, which is a little bit different. 
So the cosine of the sum of two angles is going to look like this. So the cosine of x plus y is equal to the cosine of x times the cosine of y minus the opposite sign, the sine of x times the sine of y. Okay? So again, we know what x is. We've represented x as 135 degrees. And we know what y is. We've represented y as 30 degrees. So now what I'm basically going to do here is I'm going to plug in 135 degrees in for x and 30 degrees in for y. So when I do that, it's going to look something like this. Cosine of 135 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees minus the sine of x, which would be the sine of 135 degrees, times the sine of 30 degrees. OK? I guess I could put parentheses in here. Now, we have 135 degrees. Again, we've got to go back to our unit circle and find where's 135 degrees. And to find the cosine, we've got to figure out what is, you know, what value, what is the x coordinate at that point. Well, 135 degrees is going to be in the second quadrant. And that's going to be really 90 degrees plus 45 degrees would give you 135. So we know it's going to be terms of 45 degrees. So this point, since it's in the second quadrant, it's going to be negative. So it's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees which is going to be your small angle here, which is, I'm not going to make the mistake again, it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 minus the sine of 135 degrees is, now sine is still positive in the second quadrant. That's going to be positive in the second quadrant. So if it's square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 2 over 2, so that's going to be a positive square root of 2 over 2. And then the sine of 30 degrees is going to be 1, 1 half. All right, now, again, we just go ahead and multiply. So therefore, I have negative square root of, um, square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4. Combine them into the same. And I'm left with a negative square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And then lastly, I can factor out that square root of 2. When fa uh, in this case, I'm going to factor out a negative square root of 2. By factoring on negative square root of 2, I'm left with a square root of 3 plus 1 divided by 4. OK, last example here. Uh, so now we're doing cosine. So now we're going to do the negative, or the difference, I'm sorry, uh, the difference of two angles. Again, we've already labeled our x and our y. We just need to know the formula. So the cosine of x minus y is equal to the cosine of x times cosine of y plus the sine of x times the sine of y. I'm still starting to remember this stuff. Perfect. So now we've labeled x and y. And then now we're just going to just do like what we did last one, just plug in those values. So therefore, I have the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times the sine, oops, times cosine of y which is pi over 6, plus the sine of 2 pi over 3 times the sine of y, which is pi over 6. OK, so now basically what we're going to do is go and evaluate for each of those points. So cosine of 2 pi over 3, just like 135 degrees, that's going to be in your second quadrant. So let's see here. 1 pi, oh, no, I'm not. What am I talking about? That's in the first quadrant. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, that's the same thing as 60 degrees, right? Oh, I just need to sometimes slow down, right? Whenever you're doing math, and a lot of times your brain starts to hurt and so forth, just slow down and think everything through. So pi over 3, no, that is in the second quadrant. That was pi over 6. So that's 60 degrees. So, oh my god. So that's pi over 3. So that would be 2 pi over 3. And then that would be 3 pi over 3. The reason why I'm writing that up there is because I know that pi over 3, I have the coordinates of 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So this one is going to be a reflection, which is negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Again, I don't have the unit circle on me. If you had a unit circle or you're allowed to use it, then obviously it would be much quicker and easier to find it. I'm just going off a of memory of using unit circle because I'm assuming that's what you need to do if you're at this point in your course. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be a negative 1 half
the cosine of pi over 6 is going to be square root of 3 over 2 plus the sine of 2 pi over 3. So the sine, the y coordinate, is going to be square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6. So pi over 6 is going to be that first angle, which is going to be 1 half. So therefore, now I multiply Multiply them, I get negative square root of 3 over 4 plus square root of 3 over 4 equals 0. Hmm, this is a random one I picked, so let me go 2 pi over 3. So that would be your final answer, but I'm just going to check this at the end. So let's double check this. What I'm doing is I'm typing in actually the angle, 2 pi divided by 3 minus pi divided by 6. And it is equal to 0. OK, cool. I guess I did everything right. I've just never had a 0, I think, on all the problems from other books I've used. So sweet, though. That works. So that's 0 over 4, which is equal to 0. And again, this was a new problem that I picked. I didn't check the answer. Um, but I did check the answer with my calculator, which ends up giving us 0. So that works. Awesome. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed using the sum and difference for sine and cosine to evaluate for an angle. Thanks.